Now let's talk about some other accessories. How about lens hoods? Um, most all lenses, in my experience, benefit from having hoods on them. While some lenses are deeply recessed and they form a kind of natural hood, many are not, and they need the hood to block extraneous light, flare, from making your work even more difficult. So we need hoods and we should use them. They also help to prevent whatever from damaging your lens. It's just another little protection. Um, you know, there's a whole site. If you have, yeah, if you have an icon lens and want to know what hood fits that lens, I'm going to post the URL here for you to go and look at. It's a great, great site to know about. It just has everything about every lens and every kind of hood. So this is something you want to write down. Stop the stop the video and write it down. Now let's talk about batteries. Now, I'm a little obsessive about having extra batteries for my camera. I try to carry an extra one in the car, but seldom on my person when I photograph because I'm never that far away from the car. I don't often shoot more than maybe a thousand photos at one shooting. We're talking about stacking where you, you rack up a lot of layers. So these new lithium batteries are, are probably enough for one outing, maybe then some. My suggestion is that you have a total of three batteries for your camera, one in it and the other two charged and ready to go. I have at least that many. And again, I think that I'm a little crazy that way. And on, another thing are flash cards. Let's talk about them. H how large? There's different, th different modes of thinking about flash cards. Some people say have a bunch of smaller ones because if a big one goes bad, oh. And the other ones say have big ones. I'm in favor of having the biggest ones that are fast enough and good enough to use. And if they go bad, I've never had any go bad. So I've had them go through the washing machine in my shirt pocket by mistake and they still work. So uh, I wouldn't suggest that. I have flash cards that are up to 128 gigabytes in size, although the 128 gigabytes are these small, the smaller, very small uh, SDHC cards. Now these SDHC cards are less expensive, and as I mentioned, they come in pretty large sizes. Your DSLR may take either or both of the above sizes, either the compact flash or the SDHC size cards. Uh, but be sure to read the fine print on the camera maker's website to see which speeds and versions of these cards work best in your camera, because some of them won't. Uh, the SD cards come in different formats, like SD, SDHC, SDXC, Extreme, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So it's worth the time to just check it out, write it down. Most of my cameras, the big DSLRs, have two card slots. So I like to use two 32 gigabyte cards or higher. Uh, I have yet to ever take more photos than this, even after a couple days. And despite focus stacking, which by definition just eats up a lot of memory. Now let's talk a little bit about keeping your sensors clean. Now, if you're working out in the fields and meadows, like I often do, there's no such thing as not getting dust in your camera. I mean, inevitably I have to change a lens. Particles of dust and worse, sticky pollen even hairs they somehow worm their way inside my camera anyway and they cling to the sensor or worse sometimes hairs get caught in the mirror apparatus in front of the sensors and they really you need to try to get them out with a tweezer anyway the results are little persistent spots on each and every photo that you take this is particularly bad for those of us who focus stack because as you focus closer as you come closer in through multiple layers, that little one spot of dust bunny becomes a, a long line of uh, spots. And the finished stack photo can have a whole series of lines running through the entire photo, which are very hard to, to remove in post-processing. So you must keep your sensor clean uh, for focus stack. I mean, you should look at it, you can see it in your photos. If you don't look, then you don't see it. But um, 
Sensor cleaning is something that that's the ugliest part of digital camera work, in my opinion, but you have to do it. There are different levels of cleaning your sensor. On my Nikon cameras, I have to lock the mirror up, take off the lens, and then just look inside. Behind where the mirror was before it was locked up is the sensor, which is actually covered by a tiny filter called the AA filter, the anti-aliasing filter, or lithium niobate filter, however that's said, which is a tough filter and it doesn't scratch easily. Still, doing anything with the sensor area requires care and, you know, can be really nerve-wracking, especially in the beginning. It used to drive me crazy. So, for beginners, and occasionally for any of us, cleaning the sensor is not only difficult, but often fraught with worry about damaging the camera's sensor. It's certainly no fun for me anyway. The single most important tool for cleaning the sensor is some way to know if you have it clean. The traditional way used to be suggested that you go outside, point the camera lens at the sky and take a photo. Then get that photo image off the card, put it on, into Photoshop or somewhere, expand the photo, and then minutely inspect the entire photo for dust, for what are called dust bunnies. This is a horrible method, and it can take a very long time going outside and in, etc. It's, it is easy to spend an hour doing this if you fail to remove the dust you can't see using any way except as described above. But there is a solution, and this is some sage advice if you can listen. Maybe the best money I ever spent in regard to this was to buy what's called um, a sensor loop. And I bought something called the Brightview Quasar Sensor Loop. It cost a huge amount of money, 88 bucks. But believe me, it's worth every single penny. You can get them from visible dust. This, this is a seven times round magnifier that fits snugly over your open lens hole when the lens is off and is lit by six or more bright LED lights. And by looking through the, you know, the little loop, the magnifying glass, you can see every last speck of dust on the sensor. I mean, what a relief it is just to be able to see the dust devils. So um, no more taking photos and then examining them. If you value your peace of mind and don't want to be ritually humiliated by the previously mentioned process, just buy a sensor loop. I know it's expensive, but you won't regret it. That said, here in general is what has to be done to clean a sensor. Now, I have to make a disclaimer here that don't just do what I say or suggest. Refer to your camera manual for exact details. I don't want to be responsible for what you do with your own camera. So this is just an overview so that you know what you're up against rather than a step-by-step -step instruction. The first thing to do is to place the LED sensor loop you bought on the camera and look inside. That means you've put the mirror up, you've taken the lens off, and you place the LED sensor loop and you're looking. So what's there? Is it a tiny piece of hair? Is it those little dust bunnies or the worst is a big gooey piece of pollen. With the LED loop, you can see all of it. Next, next level is to take a special hand blower and blow air right on the sensor, pointing it right toward the dot without touching the sensor with the blower. You know, really pumping that thing and try and hold your camera upside down so that the dust falls out of it rather than just up and around and then back on the sensor. So yes, you want to hold the camera with the lens hole pointing to the ground so that the dust stirred up by the blower will just float down and out of the camera. And be sure to blow the blower out a few times so that it doesn't, sometimes it'll just suck you know, dust in from the time before. So after this, you look at the sensor again. The dust bunny may be gone or it may not. So you try this several times. And remember, every time the mirror inside your camera slaps down, it makes wind. 
that blows dust and whatnot all over the place. And the blower does the same thing uh, after blowing even a few times. So if there's something in there and you can't get it by a blower, then you need to use a special sensor brush. I use the ones by Visible Dust called the Arctic Butterfly. And I'm not saying they're better than anything else. I'm just saying that's what I use and it works. But there are lots of little blowers out there. Now these little brushes, I have a little battery operated brush that whirls around and you whirl it around before you put it into the camera so that you electrostatically charge it so that the brush will actually pick up dust on contact. Then you turn it off. You don't stick it in whirling. Then you very carefully, gently, gently brush the sensor without going beyond the edges of the sen sensor size. Now, this is the worst part of it. Beyond the edge of the actual sensor, somehow, is oil. If you get the brush on that oil and then you brush back on the sensor, you're doing just what you imagine I'm going to say. You're, you're brushing oil on the sensor or grease, you know, it's, you know, it's not oil, it's grease. So you pick up the grease and then you wipe it on the sensor if you do that. So, you know, use your awareness. That's what I have to do. Just be very careful. Stay away from the far edges if you can. Uh, I had to buy a whole new brush uh, because um, I got grease on it. So anyway, now look and see if that did the trick. Often the brush will pick up what you're worried about. Sometimes not. So the last and most scary resort of all is to use a very special fluid and a special swab to actually clean the sensor manually. Again, I use swabs and fluid by Visible Dust that are made just for my Nikon camera sensors. And I'm sad to say this may have to be done repeatedly and it's very tricky. Too little fluid and you don't get it all. Too much and it leaves a residue. And you have to do it again just to re remove the residue. Also, different types of sensors take different cleaning fluids. So note this, be sure to check on that. Anyway, as you can see, this is no fun at all, folks. But what are you going to do? If you send it back to Nikon, it's going to cost you a fortune and take weeks. And finally, it's just what I was mentioning. If, if all of the above does not work, you will have to send the camera back to Nikon or wherever your manufacturer is. I've never had to do that yet. And the above is just a very general description of the process and is by no means meant to be definitive. Um, you must refer to your camera manual for precise instructions. I cannot be responsible for errors you might make in attempts to clean your sensor, only for errors that I make. Using the procedures listed above you use them at your risk. And before doing anything, read this excellent article on sensor cleaning by the expert photographer, Tom Hogan. I'm gonna list that URL for you right here. That will just say better than I have uh, how to go about this process. And just a word about hand blowers. H hand blowers are helpful. They can blow dust off lenses but they are also used, as mentioned earlier, to blow dust off sensors. When blowing dust off sensors, I find it wise to make sure to blow out whatever is in the blower before even blowing on the sensor, lest you blow residual dust that's in the blower right on the sensor, and I have done this. Uh, and I think I mentioned earlier, the worst things are hairs that tend to be attracted to the rubber on, on some blowers and they can work themselves inside the blower, ending up, you guessed it, uh, snaggled somewhere on your sensors, and they're really a pain to get off. 